I think one of the biggest challenges in starting Mass Effect Andromeda was making sure that we were honoring the, the original trilogy and the, fa the fans of the original trilogy, really, while still being able to offer something new and valuable for people that had never been a part of that franchise previously. On the art side, we knew that there was definitely some very strong, iconic visual imagery that we wanted to pull forward. The strength of the Mass Effect aesthetic is in its graphic design. Mass Effect is very graphic. It's the arcs, it's circles, it's very like hard edges and lines. Mass Effect 3's art director is it Derek? Derek Watts, yeah, yeah. Very strong art director. At the start of the project, that was incredibly important that him and I were aligned. I wanted to make sure that whatever design we were bringing into the franchise, he was comfortable with. I wouldn't want to betray his his trust or, or his, his initial vision by introducing something that would be coined wacky or, or off-brand or anything like that. Him and I would sit down, I would have an idea, usually get a couple sketches done, and then him and I would sit down and, and he would kind of direct me as to, you know, well, try this, that looks pretty cool, but why don't you keep this one here and that kind of thing. And so he really took me under his wing for the first little while, gave me some of the tools that I needed to understand what Mass Effect was and how to build a project of this scale. <laughs> but if you look at some of our ship designs in the game today, you can see some visual tethers that go back to the Citadel from Mass Effect 3. That was a very strong piece of imagery from Mass Effect 3. So we wanted to retain the essence of that, but try and spin it in a new way. Daniel Simon was a, he was a vehicle designer that we reached out to uh, when we decided we wanted to start building our iconic vehicles for the franchise. So the, the Tempest, the Nomad. And Daniel Simon's had a lot of experience working in, in film. Uh, he's been reaching out into games as well. He's worked on films like the Neutron Legacy. He designed the light cycles for that project. He designed the bubble ship for the movie Oblivion. Uh, so he has a lot of experience working in these sorts of productions. He knows how to make very sleek and impressive ships that have a sense of their own kind of sex appeal. You know, they, they really do look sexy on screen. Because the challenge was we wanted to bring back some of that iconic imagery in you know the original Mako and the original Normandy, but put a bit of a different spin on it. Sexy Mako. Sexy Mako. Sexy Nomad, Sexy Tempest. <laughs> we'll have uh, some nice nose art painted on there. This is the first time we've worked with Daniel Simon, and he was great to work with. We would have our weekly calls, and he would have iteration upon iteration, and he's very thorough with his deliveries, his, his iterations on the design. He's a very creative character, and so he would really push our imaginations into, into areas that were like just astounding. Not technically possible in the realm of our game, but really, really interesting options. He had one, um, this one this one we couldn't pull off, but it was, uh, it was an interesting suggestion. We have, so uh, with our Tempest, you've seen our Tempest, the whole look I wanted for that Tempest is that extremely cantilevered balance to the ship. So you have this very long, thin fuselage, but then the, the landing gear would be situated at the back. So what you get is this very long nose, and I just, I love the image of that being parked on a cliff face, and you just see this kind of, it's almost like on a perch, and you see this nose of the ship kind of extending off of the cliff face. And he had this idea that maybe, you know, when we started talking about the cargo bay, our natural inclination was to put the cargo bay at the bottom. That's kind of like generic kind of place to put it. Uh, he had the idea of actually putting it on the top of the ship. And so, you know, as the ship would land, there would be a, a mechanism that would allow that whole fuselage to tip down, and the, the Mako or the Nomad would then drive out of the, the cargo bay onto the planet's surface. Yeah, that was mind blowing. I was like, we would have never thought of that. Technically very challenging to pull off in the engine, so it's, it's sadly not in the game. But, but those are the kind of like, examples of, of just how out of the box this guy can think. Um, so it was great for us. We definitely benefited from his creativity.